Hi, I want I want to say before we start how happy I was to see Malcolm yep. Nance in a place where things weren't exploding behind him. Yeah, I know. Me too. And you have yeah. your Ukraine hat on, which was I have my Ukraine support hat on. Yes. yes. My friend of mine in Ohio makes these out of like scraps of, of uh, uh-huh. denim and stuff. Oh and wow! Money goes to you know some relief organization or another. Fantastic! So. I'm wearing the blue and gold too. I see. Yes. Yes. In honor of Major yes. Taylor, Taylor, the first African American world cycling champion. Yeah. This is my bike club. Okay. Um. So let's talk about you picked out. I mean, I want. By the way, I, I think Seska. I think Seska's right. There's no way Rudy was wearing pants in the cabinet room. No, he was not wearing pants. No. Okay. <laughs> he was um, not wearing any any trousers at he, all. You picked out Scott McFarland's tweet. Trump aide Brad Parscale a uh, text message just shown by the House uh, January 6th committee, a sitting president asking for civil war. And you said, yes, this is unprecedented in my experience. Those Brad Parscale texts were pretty. Mm-hmm. I, oh, yeah. I mean, wow. I on mean, top I mean, of. And again, and I, I forget who, who made this point last night. I think it probably was Joy Reid. Uh, none of these people did anything. All these people knew what was yeah. going on. Nobody yeah. did anything. Yeah. It was like the only thing they had to do was keep the president from setting the Capitol on fire. Yeah. And they barely did that. Yeah. I mean, all of this stuff would have been nice to know during impeachment, too. Yes. Pat, where Pat Cipollone defended him. Mm-hmm. Can you figure right. that out, that Pat Cipollone did the right thing in the moment, then defended I mean, the still, Trump, the, the then, guy, the and guy, Brad Parscale guy. went to work for him after those texts? Right. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the guy, you know, Pat Cipollone... Uh, probably still had PTSD from that meeting. And I'm with you. There's got to be video. There right. has to be video of that meeting. Right. Um, can I just say, you uh, said, we quoted you yesterday. We, you said, I think allowing Rhodes and Bannon to testify at a public hearing would be a huge mistake. They're just itching to turn everything into a circus on TV and Ollie North, the whole enterprise. And sure enough, on cue, you know, there's Bannon trash talking on his stupid podcast or whatever it is yesterday, right? No, yeah, he doesn't want, I mean, he goes to trial next week and he can't stop it. And he's, I mean, I think he's closer to the edge of panic than even the former president is. Yeah. I loved how you put it. Invite a clown, expect a clown show. Um, <laughs> but but you also close by saying, for so far, the committee's great strength has been its judicious presentation of factual evidence, almost all of it from Republican witnesses of various degrees of reluctance. It's also exactly the kind of thing that Steve Bannon loves to wreck for the sake of wrecking things. He doesn't need help in uh, building the hammer with which to do the damage. So, yeah, I think they're too smart for that. No, I think they'll, I, if they do, if they do, you know, if he does testify at all, and I don't think he's going to because I think it was merely a gambit to delay his trial and it didn't work. Right. Uh, I think, you know, it's got to be done, you know, in a soundproof bunker under the Capitol somewhere on videotape. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't let him I wouldn't let him within 100 yards of a camera. Yeah. Same with Rhodes. What? So, Charlie, were you what were you most struck by yesterday? Are you uh, surprised by anything? <laughs> I mean, what? Uh, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest with you. I which I always am. Uh, I was surprised that the committee was able to make the connection between the former president and the armed vigilantes as tight as they did. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was I was prepared to come away from yesterday's hearing saying, yeah, it was a mutuality of interest and, you know, we can't, you know, it, it, you know, it's going to be very hard in court to pin, you know, some sort of complicity on the former president for what these guys did. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. Yeah. I mean, everybody knew this was going to happen. Yeah. And the other thing that I, that I would point out, and I've been pointing this out for a week now, if I'm Mark Meadows, I'm, you know, running scales in my dressing room because he's being set up to be, you know, the guy, the man who knew everything and didn't do anything and 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 and, you know, tried to broker a peace between the crazies and the normal lawyers. And he, I mean, he's going to be, he's, he's being put, he's being placed at the center of this by everybody. Yeah. What, Charlie, would you like to engage he's in only our... Got, he's only got one person to give up. Well, this is why I'm wondering, is he the witness that Trump tampered with? Who do you think the witness is that Trump tampered with? Oh, God. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, it could have been Cipollone, uh, who, by the way, if the, the, with the available video evidence we have... Mm-hmm. He's like the most careful witness I've ever seen. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He really measures every word. Yep. You know, and that whole thing about a well, you know, of course it's bad. The president shouldn't organize mobs and burn the Capitol down. What are you people thinking? You know, he's still got a little bit of bravado to him. 
But I'm glad they got him because he was important yesterday and he was the window into the, you know, into a lot of a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, I, I, you know, I I mean, it could be anybody. It could be Meadows, Uh, although, you know, that would she uh, Liz Cheney, who, by the way, knows how to craft a a cliffhanger. Yeah, I'll say if he had been the writer's room, Dallas would still be on the air. Right. (laughs) You're absolutely right. (laughs) Uh, But. She said that it was, you know, that that that, uh, it was a witness that hadn't been called yet. And for it to be Meadows, you have to believe that he's been talking to the committee. Yeah. And I'm not willing to make that leap yet. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. He should have been talking to them like 25 seconds after Cassidy Hutchinson left the uh, the hearing room. Yeah. But and this part I was saying I could have been right from Malcolm Nance's book is the uh, Jason Van Tabben uh, Tab- Tatenhoff. Tatenhoff. I'm sorry. Um, but he just you know how all these people got radicalized on a lie. Um, he said the groups like Oath Keepers thrive off propaganda, particularly the swaying of people who may not know better through lies and rhetoric and propaganda than get swept up in these moments. Um, you know, he admits he was one of them, but he says, I think we've gotten exceedingly lucky. More bloodshed did not happen. I do fear for this next election playful cycle, because who knows what that might bring. If a president that's willing to try to instill and encourage and whip up civil war among his followers, uses lies and deceit and snake oil, regardless of the human impact, what else is he going to do if he gets elected again? Which is what Malcolm is saying. This is an ongoing mm-hmm. insurgency and why yeah. there has got to be accountability. Do you think there will be? Do I think there? Uh, I I think we're closer to it than we were two weeks ago. Uh, I mean, I I don't know who, the, who your lawyer friend was on that was on right before me. Yeah, he's right. If they can make a jury tampering case, that's easy. People understand that. You know, seditious conspiracy. First of all, I think the whole concept of seditious conspiracy is so terrifying that it's going to be hard to get twelve people to agree that it happened. I mean, there's a, a level of denial on that one, you know, com- you know, coupled with the murkiness of the charge that could cause you problems with a jury. But everybody has watched Law and Order and knows what <laughs> jury tampering is. Yeah. You know, well, everybody besides Jody and I. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I, speaking of conspiracy theorists, I, it, it, you just you pointed out uh, Ron Johnson. With his approval ratings in the tank, floundering QAnon Ron says Joe Biden is compri- uh, comprised, he meant compromised, yeah. uh, because he allegedly financed a global sex scandal sex um, operation. And you just said, come on, Wisconsin, the pot is cracked. I mean, you were talking about, you know, uh, what do you call it? Paul Ryan saying he sobbed, found himself sobbing during the January 6th attack. And you just said, ooh, zombie-eyed granny starver eyes come back. I mean... <laughs> This is the whole party at this point. They're just it, it craven. They're is. corrupt. They're cr- it, it absolutely is. And, of course, nobody sobbed harder than all the other members of the House of Representatives every time Paul Ryan, you know, produced a budget. But, right. yeah, I mean, he's, I, mean, it, I mean, I think he's clearly looking, you know, to be the guy who, you know, everybody's on my lot, except for Ron DeSantis and maybe a couple others. The lane, like, uh, strike what I said about Ron DeSantis. Yeah. The lane for someone to run for president as the, as the clear the decks, let's get back to normal candidate is wide open because everybody else is is trying to produce Trumpism without Trump. Right. Right. And and won't you know? I mean, if the first Republican candidate who wants to get up and say we made a gigantic mistake mm-hmm. in 2016 and it's really costing us, and elect me because I will. You know, I will I, I will, you know, clear the, you know, the storm debris out of off the highway. Uh, I think that person, you know, is still out there. And yeah. I think there are people who are in their own way auditioning for it. But, you know, you I think Ryan you, might be one of them. You closed your piece by saying Republican Party, all of it is still the vote suppressing, racist, plutocratic, anti-science vehicle for modern American fascism. And that's not going to change if the party nominates any of the prospective candidates yeah. who've been offered up so far. Paul Ryan is a charlatan then. He's a charlatan and a retread now. I mean, it, we were, everyone's joking about what Herschel Walker said about climate change. But you quoted a. Uh, Trump speaking in Alaska said we have bigger problems than uh, you know than that climate change. We have a we'll have a little more beachfront property. That's not the worst thing in the world. And you were just God. like idiot, idiot. They're just this is the party now. Alaska is being and I've been there so and I've seen it. Alaska is being eaten by the sea. Yeah. Uh it's barrier islands in the north are going away. They're not going to be there in in 50 years. 
and it's going to cost in excess of fifty million dollars to move the population off them. Yeah. These are these are these are places, by the way, that have been continuously occupied by human beings for three thousand years. Yeah. So, you know, and so don't go to Alaska and say that. Good God, I mean, it's like going to you know Arizona and talking about don't worry about climate change while everybody's you know measuring water by the teaspoon. Yeah. What about their voters, Charlie? You t- retweeted someone that said half of GOP voters ready to leave Trump behind poll finds via New York Times. And you said, doesn't this mean that half of them still support him? And assuming there are four or five other candidates, doesn't that mean the party hasn't moved, necessarily moved very far? I agree. I, agree. I mean, do, you know, do the math. He benefited in 2016 from a massive field. Uh, yeah. You know, he, because he had the voters who he had the voters who would show up for him and nobody else. And that was enough to eliminate you know, regardless of what else may or may, or may not have been going on. Uh, you know, remember the, you know, the first debate in Cleveland where they were all up there. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, these, yeah, and, and, you know, it was, it was to his advantage that the field stayed as large as it did for as long as it did. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I'm not prepared. I'm still, you know, I'm still rooting for his coronary arteries to keep him off the ballot. Well, uh, you know, Mark Leibovich, who just wrote the book, who talks to Republicans every day, said that's their plan, is hoping that Trump dies. That is the plan that the party has. I yeah, mean, yeah, I mean, what does I mean, that say? That, about? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it says the Republican Party has gone completely insane, but mm-hmm. we've known that for, you know, years now. Uh, you know, and, and, and that brings up an interesting, uh, an interesting possibility. If he dies, does he get the grand presidential funeral? <laughs> Does he lie in okay. state in the Capitol where his... I don't... You know, I, I suggest, his, once again, his, his splash guards uh, wherever you know, he's... What's on the wall? What? Splash guards wherever he's, they, he ends up. I'm just giving you a little... More does, Rudy li- does Rudy, like, walk behind the cortege without pants? <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. yes. Yes. The answer is yes. All right. Charlie Pierce, you are a, a day late, and but not a dollar short. You are just oh, a fantastic so amount of money. Hi, Jody, wherever you are. Aww. I'm sure you're watching. <laughs> All right. I have, to say hi to, I, I have to say hi to Odie. And again... It is so nice to have Malcolm Ma- Malcolm. Yes. I know. Back yes, home. I know. Oh, I'll say. Stay home, Love Malcolm. You. Love you. Long book tour. Long, yeah. long book. Long tour. book tour. Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Love you. See you next week. See you.